Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to paint your washes, ensuring smooth coverage and avoiding unwanted sharp edges or stiff blotches in the middle of your washes. And also how to make use of your water bead. So follow along. The consistency of your paint is very important. If you want to do a wash that uh, is very smooth, has no hard edges, no sharp edges within the wash, so you want a smooth wash um, all over a certain area, you need to get the consistency right. You need it to be quite wet, pretty wet, but not too wet so that you're painting in a kind of puddle of water. So I'll draw out a few areas here so you can see. I think we'll call this Daddy Bear, Mummy Bear and Baby Bear. Actually, I've been inspired. Um, so let's start off with, I'm going to add some water into my well here. And then I'll take a bit of paint, add it in. And I'm thinking, okay, I've got a big area to paint. So I'll add lots of water to it. Okay, so there's a decent amount of paint and water there and I'll start to paint here in this first square. But as you can see, uh, there's not much colour to it and it's really just sort of quite a bit of a puddle of water. Um, also, if I try and make a sharp edge, the brush has so much water in it, it's quite difficult to paint a sharp edge, a precise edge with it, because the, the, the brush is quite plump with all the water. Uh, now, we do like brushes that hold a lot of water, but sometimes you can have too much. Can you see that? It's just quite doesn't have a nice sharp point in the way this brush normally does because there's so much water in it. So we've got a big puddle of coloured water there that's going to take quite a while to dry because there's so much water on it. So let's go to the middle one or the mammy bear and if I just take some paint straight from the pan there and I start to paint. Okay, it's really intense colour. But it's not... I don't have enough water there. It's too dry. I mean, you can use this for, for great effects if you're painting the sea or something like that. But I'm trying to paint in this square. And it's just not... It's not exactly fluid. So it's too dry. And it's going to take me forever as well. So we're going to move on to the, the baby bear one, the one that's just right. So as you saw earlier, I mixed up. So I just went to the pan of paint, added some colour in there, squeezed it out my brush so you get as much colour as you can into the, into the area. And just add a little bit of water. So your paint is kind of, you know, it's thicker than, than that very, very watery paint. It's a nice consistency. So you need to make sure, I'm going to add a wee bit more water to it. You need to make sure that your brush is wet enough and you've got enough paint on your brush. I'm taking some of it off, but just making sure my brush is fully loaded with paint. Now if I go in and show you this. Actually, I wish I'd used uh, one of my bigger brushes. I could have swept over this in just a few strokes. But look at that, it's so beautiful. And you follow the wet area. So you take the paint, you make sure you've got a wet edge where you need to continue painting. So you don't end up with the paint drying before you've had a chance to spread the paint over the whole area you're trying to fill in. So you can see that slightly darker area there. It's nice and wet. And there we have a beautiful, 
fairly intense but beautiful flat smooth wash it's all about the consistency of the paint now if you look over here you can see that this one is still soaked it's absolutely drenched the corners are still pooling with water and because it's so wet it will buckle the paper um, to a certain degree so when it buckles it's going to force the water in in various directions so you're going to end up with more intense color in certain areas like there so the center has buckled it's risen up and it's pushed the water and the pigment out to the corners and down to the side so this won't be a flat wash it'll be darker there and there and that's because of the consistency of the paint we had too much water in that one too little water in that one and just the right amount of water in this one so I want to show you how to follow the bead of water and um, it's all about the bead of water so get some of the blue on my brush again so I'm just gonna go across like this you see that bead of water there this this little pool of water we're pulling that with us that's what we want that contains the pigment but it also contains the amount of water or the consistency of water that we want to come with us we want to pull it with us to the next area that we're painting we don't want that to just sit there and then we sort of start painting over here this is our pool of paint our pool of water and it's quite important so this bead of water comes with us we take it with us and it keeps the area that we're painting nice and wet and smooth there we go and there's our bead right in the corner okay so pull that bead of water with you as you're painting so something else i would like to show you um with with this whole idea of um paint consistency in mind is uh, painting an area where you don't want to get any sharp edges you want it all to be a perfectly smooth wash but you have to work your way around objects so you can't just paint the whole thing in in one go so let's paint this so I'm going to use the blue that I'd prepared earlier just adding a little bit more water to it because I've got a bigger space to paint here so I load my brush up, absolutely load it up, but takes a little bit of it out because you don't want it bulging, absolutely bulging. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to start painting. And you can see the beads of water as I'm painting. Like you can see, see all along there, you can see that it's still wet. And the idea, if you want a really smooth wash with no sharp edges, um, is you make sure you get back to the edge of your paint before it dries. So I need to jump back over here and get to the edge of that paint before it dries. Because if it dried, then it wouldn't really matter what we would do, we would end up having a bit of a sharp line there. And you would see it. So we'll come down here. And we're meeting up with the wet paint down there so you need your paint to be wet you can't be painting with quite dry paint if you've got an area to fill in um, because you need to jump back to your areas we started over here we painted up to there but then we had to jump down to here to catch that bit before it dried so we painted down to there then we jumped back up to there to catch that bit before it dried and that's the idea. I think I'll do another one to try and show you that a little bit more clearly. So I'll draw out another shape and I'll put a few more shapes inside it. So these shapes are getting in our way so we have to paint around them. So we can't just paint all across like that. Now I'm not showing you my skill in painting at all here we might have bumpy edges but it's just to show you the idea of how you paint washes without getting sharp edges through them so we're going to start here 
and wherever I stop there, I want to make sure it's wet because I'm going to go and carry on here because that bit there would be the first bit to dry because that's the first bit I'd stopped. So if I go all the way across here and down here and I go that far, let's see, and then I think, oh, I better, better jump over here because this is going to start to dry. So you come over here while it's wet. You paint an area, keep going, make sure all these edges are wet. But oh gosh, I better jump back up here because that's going to be drying. And then meet up where you can, join up where you can, because it means you've got less edges to worry about. And oh gosh, I better get back down here because these bits will be drying. So you're you're moving forward but jumping backwards to the other um, edges where you've stopped painting. Um, jumping back whilst they're wet to prevent any sharp edges. And actually, I haven't shown you one with sharp edges. So that's what I'll do now. So in my little bit of paper space that I've got left, let's draw this out. Let's put a shape in here and a shape in here. Right, so here we go again. I'm going to start painting, but I'm going to be a little bit lax now. So to make this a wee bit more speedy for us, I'll take some of the water off. But la la la, I'm painting and oh look, I'm focusing over here. Let's leave that there. So I'm focusing over here. And I'm not jumping back to that bit. I'm just merrily painting along like this. Just enjoying painting. I come down here. And I'm forgetting that the paint over there is going to be drying because that was the first bit that I painted. So it was the first edge that I stopped at. So I've forgotten about that and I'm merely filling it all in down here and it's all looking fine. This bit is still wet as well, so we're okay here. Then I get ever so slightly distracted. And I think, oh, I'll just have a wee play about here. And I forget that I'm needing to get to that edge there before it dries. And so I'm just doing other things, anything else other than what I should be doing if I want a smooth finish. I'm give it a wee bit a wee bit more time just to make it clear what I'm talking about. So if I touch it, if it feels cold, it's still wet. So I can feel it's still wet, but even when it is still wet, if it started to dry, you may still get a sharp edge because it's a different um degree of wetness than the paint we're now going to add to it. So you may get a sharp edge or you may get called what, what's called a cauliflower. But um, I'm going to give it another few seconds. So let's go back in now and try and continue painting. And you should see that all the areas where I'd stopped painting if I go over them, you'll have a sharp edge. Now, even if I continue and keep going round the other uh, the, the paint that I've already painted on, you'll still get um, a sort of distinct edge where you had stopped painting. So you can see that edge there. Let me see if I can take it up. You see that edge right there. So that's what happens um, if you don't continue your painting while it's wet and keep pulling uh, your paint round to join up with the rest of your paint. You must always uh, continue painting while the edge of the, the, the paint is wet. Now you can use this to your advantage. It might be something that you've decided to, to use in your painting. So let's go and use this square that we've painted here and um, Let's say for some reason this part of it would be in a shadow, so you want this part darker. So we've done one wash over the whole square. And if I just go back in with another wash of exactly the same colour, we've got a nice um, 
bit of contrast going on there. And take it over the white as well. So this is layering or glazing where you're adding colour on top of a previous colour. Now we're just using the same colour here. Um, I would say glazing would be a different video. I can show you glazing. Uh, I can make another video showing you glazing. But I just wanted to show you um, the importance of um, the um, consistency of your paint, um, of your um, water versus the paint from your pans or your tubes. It's important to get it right and to make sure uh, you've got the right amount of water loaded in your brush. So here's an example of me painting the side of a building doing exactly what I've just been showing you. So I've just painted the top bit there and you can see the darker uh, area where I've left the paint very wet and then I jump down to the bottom left because that bit would have dried um, so I had to jump and continue with that paint before it dried so I wouldn't get a sharp edge and then once I've done that back up to the top right to continue with that area and then just moving down pulling the little bead of water with me and finishing it all up one nice smooth complete wash so I hope that was useful for you all. Thank you very much for watching and do say hi in the comments. Okay, bye.